The Cuyahoga County Council regular meeting for Tuesday, May 29th is now called to order. Jean, would you please call the roll? Yes, Mr. Vice Chair. Uh, Ms. Simon? Here. Ms. Baker? Here. Mr. Miller? Here. Mr. Tuma? Here. Mr. Gallagher? Here. Mr. Schron is absent this evening. Uh, Ms. Conwell? Here. Mr. Jones? Here. Ms. Brown? Present. Mr. Hauser? Here. And Council President Brady is also absent. Can we have a motion to excuse the absences of Brady and Council Member Schron? I so move. Moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. At this time, let's stand for our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, let's take a moment of solid meditation in observance of Memorial Day for those who have served and given the ultimate sacrifice on behalf of our country. Thank you. At this time, has anyone signed in for public comment? Uh, no, no one has signed in. Can we have a motion to approve our committee of the whole meeting and regular meeting minutes on May 15th? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Announcements. Well, let me take a moment and, and congratulate our Cleveland Cavaliers on their Game 7 victory. LeBron put on an incredible show, and we'll, we look forward to, to much success in, in the finals. And also note, with these additional games, there will be quite a few county tax dollars from all those international people coming to this publicly owned queue. So we will look forward to using those tax dollars on behalf of the residents of Cuyahoga County. All right. So at this time, if we have messages from our county executive. Yes, thank you. Uh, I'm pleased to say today was the first day of our uh, DCFS listening tour. Um, this is an effort to better educate the community about the work of DCFS, and it's also designed to provide a better service from us to the community by listening to the concerns and suggestions uh, that the community may have. Um, I want to thank Councilman Miller and Councilman Jones for uh, coming today and participating. Uh, we'll be doing five more of these listening tours in the next month, and I would welcome the participation of any of the other council people. Thank you very much. Thank you. Receipt of documents submitted to council. Uh, Veterans Service Commission is required to submit budget by June 1st of each year. Legislation introduced by council. Committee report and consideration of a resolution of council for second reading adoption under suspension of rules. Can we have a motion to suspend rules? Mr. Vice President, I move to suspend the rules. Second. Been moved and seconded. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Resolution number 2018-0095, adopting various changes to the Cuyahoga County non-bargaining classification plan. Motion to adopt? Second. Moved and second. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Consideration of ordinance of council for third reading adoption. Ordinance number 2018-0005, amending Title VII of the Cuyahoga County Code to clarify requirements regarding the use of casino tax revenue and update programs funded by such revenue. Mr. Chair, mm -hmm. so this matter was heard in committee 
two weeks ago, and what we're doing is increasing not the budget amount of the total amount that we give to scholarship for college to college now, simply just reallocating the dollars to provide for additional funds per student because the cost of higher education is really going up and there's the gap is widening between what the students can afford and what the cost of college is. So this just really increases a student's amount so they can close the gap. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Ordinance number 2018-0006, amending section 804.01C2 of the Cuyahoga County Code to increase the maximum amount of individual one-year renewable scholarships from $1,500 to $1,750. Move to adopt. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 And please add, add Councilwoman name to the and Brown to the. If you could well. add my name too, please. Thank you. All right. Uh, again, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Ayes have it. Legislation introduced by executive. Consideration of a resolution for first reading adoption under suspension. Can we have a motion to suspend rules 9D and 12A? Mr. Vice President, I move to suspend the rules. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Ayes have it. Resolution number 2018-0113, amending the 2018-2019 biannual operating budget for 2018 by providing for additional fiscal appropriations for appropriation transfers and for cash transfers, amending various resolutions to reconcile appropriations for 2018. All right, can we have a adopt? Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Mr. President. Councilman Miller. This is the regular monthly fiscal agenda. Questions were directed to OBM and answered to our satisfaction. The questions and answers are on your desk. Most of the items relate to routine appropriations and close out of grants, routine transfers of levy funds, and small reallocations of, of appropriations within accounts. Two items are noteworthy. The Royalton Road project turned out to be more expensive than originally anticipated, and $1.4 million is added in this resolution for that project. Also, funds are being appropriated for the ERP project as implementation continues. This resolution contains $8.875 million in such appropriations, with $6.8 million of this being for two in-four contracts and the remainder for several smaller items. There, there is a substitute, which I move at this time. And the substitute contains a purely technical correction of section four of the resolution which was requested by the administration. And I would ask if someone would second the motion to substitute. Second. Okay. Been moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? You know, all those in favor of accepting, accepting the proposed substitute, say aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Is there any further discussion? Yeah, Mr. Chair, I wanted yes. to ask, if, and I don't see anybody. I don't see anybody from Public Works uh, about the Royalton Road project. Uh, I see that it increased by 1.4, but I believe last week it, uh, I just wanted to know how it impacted the budget, uh, their budget, because when we were in committee last week, uh, there were a series of road projects and they only have $8 million left and I wanted to know if this dipped into it or not. Is there anyone who can speak to this matter? Public Works is usually here. Matt Collier, Council staff. This is one of the questions that we actually asked in advance, Councilwoman Conwell, and they provided a written response that it is within their budget and that just the initial estimate was lower 
than what they uh, what the actual bids came back for the project. No, I, I get that that this road project was specifically more. But we, last Tuesday, uh, Wednesday, can't remember my dates. Um, <laughs> they explained a series of projects that were coming up out of twenty five uh, of serious projects that need to be done. Out of those are seven. Seven. They explained that they only had out of the twenty five. Um, Eight million was it, um, Chair? Yeah. Eight million yeah. in that, and we kind of drilled down on that. So I'm just wondering, this was not one of those projects. So since this project has increased, will that impact that overall? Those other projects that are going to are slated to be done in 19 and 20. We'll follow up with Public Works and, and OBM uh, as follow up to this uh, response that they gave us. Because they seem like it was a pretty tight budget. That's the reason I'm asking. Yeah. Okay. So this record, let's not kill any of my project. <laughs> all right. Any further questions? Any further questions? If not all those in favor of adopting this resolution based on its merits, say aye. 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 Uh, opposed? Ayes have it. Consideration of resolutions for first reading and referral to committee. Resolution number 2018-0114, authorizing an amendment to a revenue-generating lease agreement with Eaton Corporation for a lease of land and a hangar facility located at 26340 Curtis Wright Parkway, Richmond Heights, for the period June 1, 2003 through May 31, 2018, to exercise an option to extend the time period to May 31, 2023, and to change the terms effective June 1, 2018. This item will be referred to Public Works Procurement and Contracting Committee. Resolution number 2018-0115, authorizing an amendment to contract number CE-17,088 with Level 3 Communications for lease of parking spaces located at 4000 Euclid Avenue, Cleveland, for the period April 1, 2017 through June 30, 2018, to extend the time period to June 30, 2023, to change the terms effective July 1, 2018, and for additional funds in the amount not to exceed $150,000. This item is referred to Public Works. Resolution number 2018-0116, declaring that public convenience and welfare requires emergency repair of Bagley Road Culvert C-07.26 over Lake Abrams Ditch in the city of Middleburg Heights. Total estimated project cost $420,000. Finding that special assessments will neither be levied nor collected to pay for any part of the county's costs of said improvement. Refer to Public Works. Mr. Vice Chair, if I may, the subsequent public convenience and welfare uh, legislation also contains the language about finding uh, that special assessments won't be levied. And so um, based on reading the items again, because there's so many of them, uh, it is in the legislation in fact. However, um, I will be leaving that out once we get to the uh, second uh, section under the items for um, second reading. All right, well, we will deal with if those. that's okay with you, that is okay, Jean. And we will begin. We will deal with those now. Mm -hmm. uh, committee re reports and consideration of resolutions for second reading. Resolution number 2018-0098, authorizing the county executive to accept dedication of land for a part of Warrensville Center Road in connection with permanent parcel numbers 736-29042, 736-29043, and 736-13057, located in the city of Shaker Heights as a public street. If there's no comment, uh, this item will move to the June 12, 2018 council agenda for consideration for third reading adoption. Resolution number 2018-0099, declaring that public convenience and welfare requires resurfacing of York Road from Pearl Road to Pleasant Valley Road in the cities of Parma and Parma Heights. Total estimated project cost, $3,420,000. Once again, unless anyone wants to address this item, it will be moved to the June 12th Council Agenda for third reading. Adoption. Resolution number 2018-0100, declaring that public convenience of welfare requires resurfacing East 131st Street from Miles Road to Forestdale Drive in the cities of Cleveland and Garfield Heights. Total estimated project cost $1,940,000. And Jean, you can add my name to this one right now. Okay. Uh, and again, this item will move to the June 12th Council Agenda for consideration for third reading adoption. 
Resolution number 2018-0101, declaring that public convenience and welfare requires resurfacing Mastic Road from the Fairview Park West Corporation line to Eaton Road in the city of Fairview Park. Total estimated project cost $1,690,000. This item will be referred to the June 12th Council Agenda. Resolution number 2018-0102, declaring that public convenience and welfare requires resurfacing Hilliard Boulevard from River Oaks Drive to Lakeview Avenue in the city of Rocky River. Total estimated project cost $1,600,000. This item also will be referred to the June 12th Council Agenda. Resolution number 2018-0103, declaring that public convenience and welfare requires resurfacing Sprague Road from Broadview Road to the Broadview Heights Seven Hills East Corporation line in the cities of Broadview Heights and Seven Hills. Total estimated project cost $1,310,000. And this item will be moved to our June 12th council agenda. Resolution number 2018-0104, declaring that public convenience and welfare requires resurfacing of an avenue and a road located in the city of Cleveland in connection with the 2019 Operations Resurfacing Program. Total estimated project cost $1,210,000 for the avenue and road that's printed on the agenda. This item will move to the June 12th Council Agenda. Resolution number 2018-0105, declaring that public convenience and welfare requires resurfacing Cedar Road from Psalm Center Road to Woodstock Road in the villages of Gates Mills and Hunting Valley. Total estimated project cost $1,200,000. This item will move to the June 12th Council Agenda. Resolution number 2018-0110, authorizing an amendment to contract number CE-1600-242 with United Labor Agency Incorporated for operation of the Workforce Service Center, Job Seekers and Employer Services, and management of the on-the-job training program in connection with the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act for the period July 1, 2016 through June 30, 2018, to extend the time period to June 30, 2019, and for additional funds in the amount not to exceed $2,527,776. This item will move to the June 12th Council Agenda. Committee reports in consideration of resolutions for second reading adoption under suspension of rules. Can we have a motion to suspend the rules? Mr. Vice President, I move to suspend the rules. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Resolution number 2018-0097, confirming the county executive's reappointment of various individuals to serve on the District 1 Public Works Integrating Committee for the term June 22nd, 2018 through June 21, 2021, confirming the reappointment of various alternates as printed on the agenda. Move to adopt. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Yes, uh, com Council Vice President, uh, these individuals are all reappointments that have, have served um, with honor and would like to continue to serve. This is a, these positions, are, I believe, are required by, um, to be held by employees of the county. And so I respectfully request my colleagues' support. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Resolution number 2018-0106, making an award on requisition number 41613 to Kokosing Construction Company Incorporated, in the amount not to exceed $1,251,754 for resurfacing Wallings Road from Broadview Road to the Broadview Heights East Corporation line in the city of Broadview Heights, authorizing the county engineer on behalf of the county executive to make an application for allocation from county motor vehicle $5 license tax funds in the amount of $125,175.40 to fund a portion of said contract. Uh, motion, um, motion to adopt. Second. And Mr. President, Mr. Vice President, um, if I could, uh, on, on this we had uh, uh, Nicole English uh, came before uh, Public Works Committee um, this, this past week on the uh, 23rd of uh, May and um, indicated that uh, the winning bid on this project was 25% under the uh, um, engineer's estimates. Uh, it would be covered 80% uh, through federal monies and 10% through the county um, based on NOACA. Um, and I'd ask my uh, colleagues for uh, moving this forward on second reading suspension, their support on this. All, right. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. 
Resolution number 2018-0107, making an award on requisition number 42348 to Katz Construction Incorporated in the amount not to exceed $2,929,031.90 for resurfacing Pleasant Valley Road from State Road to Broadview Road in the City of Parma. And motion to adopt on this as well. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Yeah, Mr. Vice President. Um, this says uh, requ this request on secondary suspension was 20% uh, uh, under the uh, estimated bid. Uh, so be covered by 80% uh, through federal funding. Uh, and the rest it will be covered by uh, the remaining 20% by issue one funds. Uh, the estimated start date on this is July 9th. Uh, and I would ask my colleagues uh, support moving this forward as well. I can attest that this road definitely needs improving. So appreciate your support moving on here. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Ayes have it. Ayes have it. Resolution number 2018-0108, authorizing an agreement with the Metro Health System in the amount not to exceed $1,800,000 for the Metro Health Select Network Health Benefit Plan for county employees and their eligible dependents for the period January 1, 2016 through December 31, 2018. Move to adopt. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Uh, Council President, uh, Council Vice Chair President, this um, was heard in committee last week, and um, the item that is before us is to uh, is more of a clerical, a more of a clerical thing, and so I respectfully request uh, my colleagues' support so we can move forward. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed. The ayes have it. Resolution number 2018-0109, authorizing amendments to various bank depository agreements for public funds designating eligible institutions as public depositories of active and interim funds of Cuyahoga County for the period August 24, 2013 through August 23, 2017, to extend the time period to August 23, 2021, and to pay any fees in the total amount not to exceed $1,411,000 that are customary or normal normally charged in the course of doing business by various institutions effective July 14, 2017 in accordance with the Uniform Depository Act of Ohio for the banks and in the deposit limit amounts as printed on the agenda. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Mr. President and my colleagues, this resolution fulfills a state requirement and renews depository authorizations for four banks, Key Bank, PNC, U.S. Bank, and First Federal of Lakewood. Additional banks could be added by resolution later. As a result of serious problems that were explained in committee, this resolution came in very late and includes approval of $71,000 in bank fees that were paid without prior approval. The administration pledges diligence to prevent similar problems in the future. The depository resolution only creates basic framework authority that allows us to invest public money with these banks. And the exact terms and conditions will be worked out through an RFP to be issued later. As Vice President Jones advocated, the detailed negotiations may give us the opportunity to address issues relating to community reinvestment. The legislation was unanimously recommended in finance and budget, and I recommend approval. And let me just echo Councilman uh, Miller's, Miller's comments on this legislation that we had before us in, in Councilman Miller's committee. Uh, I, I looked at these four banks, and I just made the observation that First Federal of Lakewood had a limit of $6 million of our deposits they could receive. But those other three larger banks, could, you're looking at the numbers, $700 million for one bank, $600 million for another, $137 million for another bank. These deposits are an incredible amount of money, and they create an, a, a, a wealth of interest that this, uh, that this community, this government receives, but we give them a discount on that interest in, ex in exchange for service. The services that we receive from these banks, the bigger banks, are more transactional. We get lockbox services and others. But the smaller bank, First Federal of Lakewood, where you see $6 million, 
And I just imagine our former county executive, who's from Lakewood, has brokered a deal where they provide us with a help program, where they provide low interest rate loans uh, to rehab homes in the community. So a smaller bank that's giving us transformational service to the residents of this community, but the bulk of these dollars are, are receiving more transactional services. So, uh, so this legislation is before us because uh, monies were already spent, but we did not approve. So this body, we have oversight responsibilities. But also what was missed was the delay in year of, of the insight that this body can provide for the just in terms of credit needs for the constituents of each and every one of our district. Those are the things that, those are opportunities that we have here for, again, oversight and to just to share our insight. So uh, as Councilman Miller said, there certainly has been a pledge publicly that we want to make sure that these uh, resolutions and uh, legislative items appear before us in, in a timely manner. Um, but again, it, it reflects the role that we have and still have. As Councilman Miller said, there will be a master contract next year. And this year, it will be drafted in terms of what these banks can do to, to benefit our community. So I, I, I welcome any that would like to weigh in um, in the drafting of this and hope that the administration would be uh, receptive to any comments uh, that this body might have. So again, if there are no uh, further comments, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm sorry, was that in opposition? And one no. Conwell? Okay. And again, all in favor, we have ayes and one, one no vote. The legislation is passed. And please, clerk, read the next item into the record. Resolution number 2018-0111, authorizing an amendment to contract number CE-1700-127 with Ohio Guidestone for Community-Based Treatment Center Management Services for the period July 1, 2017 through June 30, 2018 to extend the time period to June 30, 2019 to change the scope of services effective July 1, 2018 and for additional funds in the amount not to exceed $1,100,000. Second. Moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Mr. Vice President, both 0111 and 0112, uh, Ms. Lipman from the Juvenile Court appeared before the uh, committee past Tuesday, recommended that we move forward one year with both of these programs. They're targeted for adjudicated uh, felony level youth, and the ultimate goal is to keep them out of the uh, Department of Corrections. Uh, all indications are these have been successful and these are reclaimed funds, so they're not gonna affect our bottom line. So the recommendation is to move both 0111 and 0112. All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Resolution number 2018-0112, authorizing an amendment to contract number CE-1700-360 with Applewood Centers Incorporated for secure residential treatment services for the period January 1, 2018 through June 30, 2018 to extend the time period to June 30, 2019 and for additional funds in the amount not to exceed $952,000. Move to adopt. Second. Moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Consideration of ordinances for first reading and referral to committee. Madam Clerk. Ordinance number 2018-0007, enacting section 205.10 of the Cuyahoga County Code to establish the Division of Children and Family Services Advisory Board. I refer to Health and Human Services Committee. Ordinance number 2018-0008, amending section 9.07 of the Cuyahoga County Human Resources Personnel Policies and Procedures Manual and approving certain straight time cash payments in lieu of exchange time for hours worked in excess of 40 in a work week in the total amount not to exceed $85,529.59 for sexennial and triennial real estate assessments for the period April 29, 2018 through July 27, 2018. Refer to Human Resources Committee. At this time, are there any miscellaneous committee reports? Mr. President. Councilman Miller. My colleagues, Finance and Budget Committee will not meet prior to our next council meeting. 
but we will meet at our regularly scheduled time on Monday, June the 18th at 1 p.m., and the primary focus at that time will be the next quarterly review on the ERP project. And at that time, we will also hear a presentation from the Department of Innovation. Thank you. Uh, Public Works uh, Procurement and Contracting Committee will meet at its uh, regularly scheduled time next uh, Wednesday. Thank you. Safety will be Tuesday. We'll be having a presentation from Juvenile Court regarding the update on the jail situation. Anyone else? I will. Um, the Health, I'm sorry, Human Resources Appointments and Equity Committee will meet at its regularly scheduled time of June 5th. 5th at 10 o'clock. And Health and Human Service? Mm -mm. No. Okay. And I'll make a, make a note that our uh, Councilwoman Sunny Simons Education and Sustainability Committee, um, the Councilwoman will allow me to chair for an evaluate, for the presentation of the evaluation of our, our uh, closing the achievement gap initiative the efforts we've done to help uh, mentor ninth graders through 12th grade. Um, Case Western Reserve, again, has uh, completed their evaluation work and will discuss the uh, impact we've had in terms of graduations, suspend, uh, reducing suspensions, increasing attendance, and, and reducing dropouts. So that presentation will take place uh, on June 4th at 10 a.m., again, the Education Sustainability Committee. Is there any miscellaneous business? If not, if nothing else holds our attention, our meeting is adjourned.